So, marine biology, right? That's the one about dolphins and seals and all the other cool stuff you see in aquariums. I mean, it's fun to look at, but it doesn't really matter to you if you don't want to be a dolphin trainer, right? Well, surprise, surprise, there's more to marine biology than dolphins and Shamu. I mean, they're part of it, but that's like saying the number three is a part of math. Marine biology is one of the most complicated and fascinating subjects out there, and it's hard to even know where to start when talking about it. But I like green sea turtles, so let's start there. Now before we get started, you can call me Mr. McCracken. I graduated with a degree in zoology from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, with an emphasis on marine science. I was a marine biologist out in Hawaii for a while, and I'm teaching high school science and earning a master's in curriculum and instruction at Cal State Dominguez Hills. I love marine biology, and I love science, but I'm really into wildlife photography and scuba diving and surfing. I hope I can help you see just how cool this stuff is, maybe help you get involved with it. So yeah, green sea turtles. Now, it can be tough being a reptile in the ocean. Most of them can't really keep a steady body temperature, which means they freeze to death really easily in cold water and most of the ocean is cold water. Way to go, turtles. This is why green sea turtles like to stick to warm coral reefs and seagrass beds in the tropics and subtropics. They like to live in areas with lots of sun, and they'll even haul themselves out into beaches to lay in the sun and warm up for a bit. This is called basking, and it's as good a way to spend a Tuesday as any. And it's a good thing they like sunny places, because plants need the sun to grow, and adult green turtles are vegetarians. The babies will eat sea jelly, squid, and whatever else they can catch, but adults mostly just eat seaweed and sea grasses. They eat so many plants that the fat in their bodies is stained green, which is how they get their name. Uh, side note, you can also tell if a turtle is a boy or a girl because the boys have longer tails, which is adorable. Now, having a flat body and a wide shell is great for swimming quickly and protecting yourself from predators, but it can make some parts of life a little tricky. It's tough to clean your body when it's shaped like a table, so they can sometimes get grime and seaweed stuck to them. When that happens, they just find some fish that like to eat seaweed and just let them go to town. The fish get a snack, and the turtles get clean. This is called symbiotic mutualism, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a win-win. Now, unfortunately, all seven remaining species of sea turtles, including green sea turtles, are endangered. This means that a lot of them have died recently, and there aren't very many of them left. Most of them were killed by pollution, like when they accidentally eat plastic, which is why it's really important for us to remember not to litter and recycle when we can. There is some good news, though. Countries all over the world are trying to protect their turtles by preserving their habitats and reducing pollution. In some places, this is actually going really well. In Hawaii, where they are known as Honu, over 3,000 wild turtles currently live on the coral reefs. Now, hopefully, turtle populations around the rest of the world will also start to bounce back. And that's about all I have time for today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about green sea turtles, and you're ready for another episode about marine biology sometime. Let me know what topics you guys are interested in, and I'll see what I can hustle up. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.